Hey kids, strap it on for the latest edition of the p- ah, fuck it, good enough. Figure it out. I played so much new pinball this weekend. Yeah, yeah. And it's been a long time a coming. That's what she said. I played Jaws. I played Pulp Fiction. I played Labyrinth. I played Jaws Pro and Premium. And then a, a few classics that I just always want to play, such as Ghostbusters and Iron Maiden and Walking Dead Pro, Jurassic Park, Stranger Things Premium. And I guess, oh, surprise, surprise, someone who does a pinball podcast was playing pinball, but it's been a while since I've gotten a chance to venture out of this town and play some pinball at a great location. Which leads me to a few <laughs> a few th- points, but I, I chuckle because uh, things I've brought up in the past of, why don't you just go play on location instead of buy and sell games and buy and sell and trade and give it... Because, fucker, all the good locations are a ways away. And sometimes the cost is almost cheaper to buy a game, play the snot out of it, and sell it. For those new to the program, Pinball Party Podcast here, we are a intelligent podcast for fans of children's books, whatever. Welcome, if you're new. But to everyone else, you, you know what I just mentioned. That's where this podcast came from. People giving me shit for getting rid of games fast or whatever. But I feel redeemed... A little monetary example here of why going on location to play new popular pinball machines is not always the most intelligent thing to do. All the games I just mentioned I played that I want to get into shortly, I had to play at a place that is not local. The closest place to me that has the newest, hottest, good shit is, well, in my opinion, the best place for me to go to is Bad Penny in St. Paul, Minnesota. Also part of Starcade and this brewery that I don't remember. But anyone in the area, Wisconsin, Hudson, Minneapolis, St. Paul, if you don't go to Bad Penny to play pinball, you're missing out on some some greatness. The next closest for me is Tilt Pinball, which is about another half hour away. However, Bad Penny has so many more things going for it than Tilt Pinball, in my opinion. For me, First and foremost, aside from it being slightly closer, um, uh, it is about an hour and 20 minutes from me, Bad Penny. That is from getting in my garage and going, like full everything. I consider my time value, my personal time value is roughly $100, give or take, depending on what I'm doing. But that's just my gut check when I think about what is my time value for doing things. So let's just say it's a three hour round trip to go to get Bad Penny, right? That's 300 bucks. That comes into play shortly, but let's just let's start with that. Going back to how great Bad Penny is and what it has going for itself and me, um, first and foremost, the time. But I'm willing to do it when I want to play a handful of games. The other thing it has going for it is its hours. It opens at 7 a.m. Thank God. I'm not sure what a lot of these pinball places are doing opening up at like 11 a.m. Tilt, no offense. Well, maybe slightly. Nothing against the business. Tilt is fantastic, mind you. Okay, as far as game quality and what they keep in there and all the the owners and the people that run it. Tilt, A+. plus. Not, not that. Bad Penny to me, though, opens at 7 a.m. And as someone who's 41 and normally wakes up at about 5.30 a.m., if I normally, you know, to, for me, go to the gym, go to work, do my thing. If I'm going to go to Tilt on the weekend... Okay, I get up, 5.30, I have uh, oatmeal and protein powder, and then coffee, uh, half-calf, mind you, just because I'm sensitive to caffeine, so I, I wax away into my caffeine content, fuck off. All right, so then I'm done with that shenanigans by 6.30, if I go to the gym, that's 7, I come back by 8.30, all right, now I'm waiting. Well, if I drive, it's an hour and a half. But this day, it was uh, push-pull legs. It was my day off, so I woke up at 5.30. I didn't have to work out. I went on the treadmill for a half hour just to like, you know, get some blood pumping. But by 6.30 a.m., I'm like, all right, I want to play pinball. I don't have to wait till 11 a.m. I don't have to just sit and stare at the wall for five hours. I can drive to Bad Penny where they treat their hours to their clientele, which is adults, usually not 19-year-olds that need to sleep until noon to until they wake up. No, so they wake up. They, Operate starting at 7 a.m. Amazing. I get up, 
I go to Bad Penny. Oh, another thing, sorry, that, that, that they're incredible at. Their selection of games. Uh, the guy who maintains and runs them and buys them. I forget his name. Shit. Doc, help me. Text me. Remind me. Yeah, when you, if you listen, text me. What's his name? He's got dreadlocks. He's awesome as shit. I think it's Mikey or some shit, maybe. Sorry. If he's listening or whatever, dude keeps... The point is, the games are in tip-top working condition. All mint. All connected to Insider Connected. It just, they're great. And the location is so nice. It's not a, a dive bar. It's not all dungeony in there and, and dark. It's a big open warehouse with a brewery in there, a fantastic coffee shop. And then the pinball machines are all located in kind of the central area. And it's just a, it's just a pleasure to be there. If I was to describe Bad Penny to someone, I would just say it's a pleasure to be there. So to you listening, listeners, pinball enthusiasts yeah joel yeah good good triple drain last week go listen to triple drain podcast on the pinball network to pinball enthusiasts bad penny it's a great place to be so i decided to go there let's go back to the cost three hour round trip that's where i came up with the three hundred dollars that cost me right i go and play uh, i don't know what what did i play 10 20 to 15 to 20 dollars worth i just i just got a lot of quarters they're on dollar play there so it's a little little steep but hey for the for the price or for the condition of the games worth it no problem no complaints here uh uh so i go there i spend 300 dollars right and then 20 five dollar cup of coffee plus a tip let's say it's 325 all right then on the way home i get my fucking ass pulled over yeah what did i get pulled over for Oh, I, I made this severe crime of passing someone on the interstate who was going at the speed limit in the passing lane, in the left, going the speed limit, two cars, I had to pass them. How do you pass someone? Well, you have to speed up, don't you? All right? So I go in the right lane, I speed my ass up, driving a CX-30 Turbo. I say that just because it's a really fun car, especially on the highway, the turbo really kicks in and, and you're good to go. It's a, for those wondering, it's like the best in-between type of car. It's not really a sports car, by it's it's not, but it's, it's got a nice turbo. It's got some good torque. It's like 300 pound feet of torque. It's nice. It's nice on the highway. So when you need to get going, you, you go. So I push the gas pedal. I pass these sons of bitches and I get my shit pulled over. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So she pulls me over and I do the thing where they say, you know, oh, do you know why I pulled you over? I played dumb. Nah, maybe I'll get out of it. You know, I don't. Well, I got you for speeding. You're going 78 in a 70. Was this it? No, no, it was, it was 88. I mean, I was going, you know, uh, I'm like, okay. And she's like, I noticed you slowed down as soon as you passed those two cars. You must have saw me, huh? And then slowed down. She's trying to like catch me and like, I'm just some fucking, you know, criminal that I'm like, no, I was trying to pass those cars because they wouldn't move over. And then I slowed down to drive responsibly, you know? As my you know what you think gang banging drug addict self was all up all night ugh, ugh, i'm fucking meth and i drove to play pinball at bad penny arcade it's a nice place to be and then drove back to eau claire wisconsin at 41 Wait, yeah no I'm, I'm out here just causing mischief passing people at 88 and then oh my god a fucking copper nah I, so i explain i didn't try to like defensively but i just said nope i just passed those two cars because they weren't moving over and she even knew she's like oh yeah yeah they were going a little slow like, right no she's like well i'm gonna have to cite you for it and i'm like oh, okay cool fuck me right great so for those wondering a speeding ticket is 250 dollars and 90 cents in the state of wisconsin for going 18 miles over the speed limit so i got that which is great 300 dollars for my personal time 250 dollars for this lady who, yeah, let's, mm. and uh, so it was 550, another 20, 575 with the coffee, 575 bucks to play a few games of pinball. That's why I buy and sell games. Okay. But I think she did. She, the, the trooper is, is who I'm referencing when I say she, um, I, I mean, I don't think she identified as a man. Does that happen if a cop comes up and they, <laughs> if they look like a, Maybe I shouldn't get into that. Um, 
please, please call me, sir. Not ma'am. I did call her ma'am. I thought she might say it because I live in 2024 and the woke scares you every second, especially as a white man. You don't know what to say. So that's scary. But she did inver- inadvertently help me think of a business idea. And that is, I, I don't know what to call it. Uh, I'm just going to go with car fart. This is what I think uh, someone should make. Maybe I could, someone. But it's a button in your car to hit when you... In this case, when myself, the criminal of me, doing a slightly illegal... I mean, technically illegal thing, but totally like... Who gives a shit? Like, what? I get pulled over. Okay. Well, I have no control of the situation. And... But I want the officer to feel some of that you know i i want some control in the situation so you hit the car fart button what does it do it makes your car suddenly smell like shit like like diarrhea like really bad taco bell shit so the second they roll their window down the trooper mind you they get smashed in the face with that fucking stink cloud and you the passenger the driver of the car get to watch what happens Basically, what's the sociology of the situation? What is the fucking cop going to do when the window down gets rolled down and they get bashed in the face with a just cloud of shit? That is the value the buyer of the car fart technology would get. You get this little bit of like, okay, because what is a cop going to say? I mean, I mean <laughs> they, they have like two seconds and you get to watch this. To really think like, oh my God, I just smelled shit. It smells like fucking hell. Do I go like, oh, pew, like, what? Eh? You can watch them squirm knowing that it stinks. Or two, they have to try to like, you know, save face and like an officer of the law. The stink does not bother me. Shit has no bearing on my attitude here, sir or ma'am. <laughs> so you get a couple seconds of seeing like, what do you, I know, you know, it's, you know, it's fucking stinks. Mind you, you also have to smell it. It's kind of like bear spray. Like you have to pay a little bit of a cost to really get them. But it's marketed towards the car fart. It's marketed towards that situation. Not like murderers. I mean, that. I, I mean, I guess if you were trying to make a sale, sell to whoever. Basically, anytime a cop pulls you over, you hit this fucking button. The cabin of your car instantly smells like shit. And the cop who's going to write you this $250 ticket at least has to smell your shit. I would buy it. I know a few people who'd buy it. If you would buy it, write into pinballpartypodcast at gmail.com. But essentially, I would just like some of these coppers to just deal with that. Good luck. Fuck. So I get pulled over. I don't get to make this trooper smell shit. Car fart wasn't invented yet. We're making that now. Um, $575 $575 later. I have some impressions of pinball machines, so let's <laughs> let's fucking get into that. Labyrinth and Jaws were the two most anticipated for me during this trip to Bad Penny. Neither have I played in the past. And Jaws, of course, it's Elwin's new game, which is selling like hotcakes. And selling like hotcakes at one of the best places to buy pinball machines, the only place to buy pinball machines. In the U.S. of A., that place is flipping out pinball. When I buy my pinball shit, I buy from flipping out. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. When I buy my pinball shit, I buy from flipping out. From Topper's Art Blade Premiums, I've got it figured out. Flipping out. Yeah. Figured out. Oh, yeah. When I think Uh, of pinball, I think flipping out. Oh, yeah. Flipping Uh, out. Yeah. Figured out. Oh, yeah. When I buy, uh, buy, buy, I yeah. buy from flipping out. Oh, yeah. Buy, sell, and even trade. All the pinball stuff you could ever want from machines to accessories from people who give a shit. Flipping out pinball. Zach, Nicole, Greg, Zach's dad, Zach's uncle, Zach's cousin, five of Zach's kids, two turtles, and a rabbit will assist you at flipping out pinball. All right. Let's talk impressions of the games I played. In order. Labyrinth was the first game I played. Truth be told, the most excited I was to play it. And I really loved the vibe that it was a low-key kind of 
um, it, it felt like a fairy tale, you know, playing it. The, the music, the little, I don't know what any of the things are called. I've seen the movie like once, so whatever, the little fucking goblin things, I don't, I don't know, the things that pop out, uh, yeah, like little shits, those little fucking guys, cute, cute little guys popping up, kind of like the Elvira gargoyles, a couple things poking out, does that, does that work for you? You like this audible medium of me describing something I don't even know the name of? Yeah, okay, thanks for listening. The The vibe was really cool, the, the playful, jovial, just melodic, kind of relaxing tone of the whole thing i did not know the rules i didn't spend a ton of time i never do the first three to five games of any game you know it's shot feel let me just soak it in see if anything stands out and the things that sta- stood out aside from what i mentioned were the f- a couple of the shots felt tighter than i th- i would think they would be like the main left ramp was a little like I, I fucking hit it like once out of three games, four games. And if I did hit it, it wasn't super satisfying. So there's that. The right shot, the right ramp was super satisfying and I hit it 90% accuracy. So that was great. The horseshoes in the middle, the hitting the horseshoe on the right side. Now picture like the Star Wars for those who haven't played Labyrinth or if you haven't, a horseshoe. I, I hit the right side fairly easily the left side and labyrinth was uh, jostled the ball out quite easily so not as smooth um, the orbits were somewhat easy to hit which is a good thing and um, that little scoop is that a scoop in between the horseshoe it's hard to describe over an audible medium again does use that phrase twice sorry uh the game look at the game fucking pull it up on your phone if, if you want uh Long story short, only the right ramp really felt good to me. The flippers seemed a little, not not soft, weak, JJP style, but like, eh, not quite there. Um, I really liked the video screen that was like underneath the video screen, right above the play field under the glass. It's hard to explain, but this thing in the backboard was really nice. I don't know if I ever started multi-ball. Nothing, um, the rules might be intuitive, I guess, if, if you look it up and, you know, <laughs> it's intuitive when you know it, right? Um, so I didn't really follow the rules much. I was surprisingly just like, okay, that's nice. I'd play it if it was locally a lot more to learn it more. I'll, I walked away from it more negative than I thought I would. And not really negative, just less enthused. Yeah. Negative is not the right word. As far, as far as like a first pinball machine from a company, a triple plus unbelievable there's no bugs everything was just worked great it looked incredible it yeah i mean in that context home run shit absolute home run if it was a theme i cared about more so um yeah it would just be whatever so anything i I say the like somewhat negative walk away from it because that was one that since the beginning i'm like oh my god this has the potential to be like fucking one of the best one of the greats and maybe it will when, you know, truth be told, when all is said and done and the dust settles and may maybe playing it at home, you know, different. I'm more than anything. Barrels of Fun can absolutely make a pinball machine as good as Stern and JJP. That's what I learned, if anything. Um, like, OK, I'm going to keep paying attention to this. It wasn't where you sometimes you play a game like the one I'll talk about just shortly and be like, eh, you know, um, that's not the one I'm about to say, but the next game I played was Pulp Fiction, but I've played it before in the past. But this is the first time playing it since having David Teal on the show and talking to him about audio on the side about Pulp Fiction. But um, I remember the first time I played Pulp Fiction at MGC, Midwest Gaming Classic, for those unaware, and was blown away. It, it remains incredible. The, the, the music and the audio... Mm, tie for me on what stand out the most in that game just like before with the uh is the color scheme the right word the, the the vibrance of the colors on that game both from a play field uh, a sculpt and lighting like it just feels like bubblegum pinball with fantastic fucking audio god damn it and the granted the sourcing is great pulp fiction is a great movie and the call outs and the the music yeah i if anything 
Pulp Fiction did the most out of <laughs> for mono signal audio in a pinball machine. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's so good. And the game is great. I love the flipper feel in that game, which it's like a different kind of stern level of snappiness. It's just a different flavor of it. Um, I've used these kind of um, comparisons in the past a few times, but if Mario or Mario 3 is like a nice barometer of how an NES platformer game should play or feel, Ninja Gaiden slash Gaiden is the other, I think. There's others, but those are my personal, you know, where I can like, oh yeah. Ninja Gaiden is like a different snappy, quick, fuck, fucking fast feeling game. Mario's is just a very well controlled, control, you know, um, player feel, flipper feel, the controls of the game is what I'm getting at. Just another version of of greatness is what Pulp Fiction is. I, uh, you know, when I hesitated earlier there, I was going to say, um, I was going to say Mega Man X on the Super Nintendo, but yeah, anyone who's aware knows like those games feel great and Stern's notoriously feel great to play. The controls of the pinball should be the number one barrier of entry or the number one barometer again. And Pulp Fiction has it in spades, but I've played Pulp Fiction in the past and loved it. And I've, yeah, I, I want one. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I want one, oh, man. What a great game after Pulp Fiction I went to play Jaws, and I I don't know what... Is there hype about it? I was going to say, I don't know what the hype is about it. I don't, I don't get it. Um, I get... I didn't learn the rules again. A couple parts I did, you know, how to start a mode and, and get multi-ball. Um, a couple of the shots feel great. Um, the center rampy horse... Center rampy? you know center ramp feels great the right orbit slash ramp feels great the chum bucket is a nice little um bashy uh the upper play field every time i got up there just kind of flew off or fell down it was fine um i like the um that's it <laughs> i uh it uh, so like it had the elwin flow to it a lot of cool shots i did get multi-ball and got to play with the the what is it the lock um flip lock which is neat it's actually very intuitive yeah my biggest takeaway positive from that game were uh those two shots i mentioned and the flip lock man flip lock is fucking awesome if i would have known the rules better probably would have helped because there's a lot going on in that game a lot so you know that's one of those it's unfair on location to just Here's an Elwin game with so much shit in it. It's like playing Skyrim in the arcade. You know, hey, I'm at the arcade. What do you want to play? Let's play Skyrim. Put 50 cents in it and play five minutes of a game that you beat in like 80 fucking hours. Or go play Breath of the Wild in the arcade. I mean, you, you're going to walk away from either of those games. Uh, like, eh, it's not great. Maybe even Dark Souls. Pick a long playing video game or something that basically shows its value when you invest time in it. And I think Jaws is is like that. So walking away unimpressed is not unimpressed from Keith Elwin or the game he made, but as a location-based game, Jaws didn't do much for me. Is that a you problem as in Stern as a, for a product, or is that a me problem? Uh, the person that spent $575 to play um, some pinball. Maybe it's a... It's got a big target on it because it's Jaws, you know, and it's it's by Keith Elwin of maybe I'm subconsciously like I better find a negative reason for this. But uh, let me tell you a very objective negative for this game. F- for me, when I played it, yes, the fin, the moving fin was was cool. It was a great little, you know, it pause and hit the moving fin. Great. I hit it like once. Surprisingly harder than, yeah, you think. And I've heard that before. Uh, which made me self-doubt my ability as a man and a pinball player. So thanks. <laughs> uh, but the negative was, so the center ramp that you hit, is it a ramp that, you know, vertical vertical ramp comes right back at you. Super consistent to hit that easy shot, great shot. The wire form that, that then comes down to the play field and loops around to the left flipper was either, it was just too close to the play field. So the ball kept getting like wedged in between the wire form and the play field. 
Yeah. I mean, and it was, it was on an LE. I said premium earlier, but it was an LE, a Jaws LE. And so I would hit that shot in the, in the wire form would like wedge it quickly and, and, and make it so the velocity was lessened and would obfuscate some of my shots. So is this a bad penny thing? I don't know. It's just a wire form, like by its own weight, I could see there's nothing wrong with it. There's no screw missing. It was either bent wrong out of the factory or something happened. So it was any shot that the ball would go under that wire form is too close to the play field and it would move it around. It would get like wedged. So that sucked. On the newest, the most expensive game at Bad Penny was that LE, and it was the most dysfunctional of all the games. I uh, got an air ball from the um, the jaw, uh, the fin, and it felt a little janky. Um, the little reel wasn't really consistent when it launched. I shouldn't say really consistent. It wasn't. It never did it. Could be the setup, but the bubble looked center. Yeah, so I played Jaws once, and it was, <laughs> I've done this before, uh, the second ball, I was like, I just want it, I just don't want to play anymore, I want to drain it and, and move on, but there was a couple other people playing, and I didn't want to be like, it's that thing where like, I don't want to be weird where they think I don't know how to play pinball, and then they try to like teach you, sometimes p- pinball people are weird, um, they didn't end up being that, but I just didn't want to deal with people, I'm here with my coffee, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing pinball, don't talk to me, uh, so Jaws, right, uh, I got... I played it again after that first game, but after that, I was like, I need to play a game I like. So I went to Ghostbusters. Ah, fucking Ghostbusters is so good. I played three games of Ghostbusters, only had to pay for one, you know, replayed the shit out of it. Um, Yeah. Hit the ramp, hit the left flashies, and then you hit the multiplier and then continue. That's how you play that game. Uh, So I played some Ghostbusters, played some more Ghostbusters. And then I went back to the oh, they had Jurassic Park premium. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. I'll play a little Jurassic Park. Again, cleansing that palette. And then uh, over to um, Walking Dead Pro. Just again, playing games I haven't played in a while that I've owned and just love. Playing some pinball. Walking you through my day. And re-falling in love with all these games. And immediately like, God damn it. Infinite money. Infinite money. I would definitely own a Ghostbusters again. And I will own a Ghostbusters again for the fourth time. That's not a braggy thing, mind you. This isn't like, I've owned it four fucking times. Yeah, it's just the reality of it. Uh, Walking Dead Pro would definitely own again. From owning the Pro twice and the Premium once, I don't even know which one I would take. I might go back to the Pro because the Premium is somewhat easier. No, it's very much easier than the Pro. And the Pro is like nasty hard. They're both hard games, but the Pro is just like, fuck, I, when you want to just get raped, you know, it's, which isn't often. I can speak for myself. R- rarely. Uh, and then I went back to the one, I almost like, like teasing myself, like, don't play it. Don't play it so you're ready. Fucking Foo Fighters. Oh, it's so good. And they have an LE there, which I've played there in the past. It was the LE last time that I played that, convinced me to get an le of foo fighters which i owned back then but um yeah then got rid of it before like the market was and i was getting out of pinball and, and whatever i want it back but um god foo fighters it is so good oh my god um and bad penny because they're badass already had it updated to the newest code which was a godsend because from seeing the new code on the internet and hearing the new callouts, I was so disappointed with the callouts on the video. To the fact where I messaged Ray Day on the side, like, hey, can you turn those down? Um, you know, I don't want to hear them ever. <laughs> they sounded so bad and loud. The new Foobot call uh, callouts for those unaware of what I'm talking about. Foo Fighters just came out with the topper and expression light kits and all these new accessories. So code to boot. Foo Fighters Code 1.0, which they added. Um, so a lot of a lot of new callouts, um, and I would assume topper functionality as well. But uh, through those callouts and some some another Combatron mode, another multi ball. Forgive me, I don't have it in front of me, because for me, what I cared about most was the expression lights, even though they were there in the past. Uh, anyways, I digress. The Fubot callouts sounded just like way too loud. And they're putting, they, they have some sort of a stereo spreader on it. Um, they're like, oh, what does that affect? It, it's, it's, a, it's a stereo spreader is kind of what I use on MEF as well, if, if you hear MEF. 
Um, oh, yeah. yeah. That's what's going on there. And what happens with other audio that isn't, that is unaffected by that, you suddenly hear like, oh, shit, because it's an effect that, it, you know, it's supposed to. It's warranting, hey, I'm different. It's a differentiator. Uh, that's what the effect is doing. So uh, on YouTube, when you're just getting this like stereo sound and everything's mixed together in this one thing, uh, effects can overpower other frequencies. I'll just leave it at that. They'll make them stand out more. And boy, did they stand out. And I thought, holy shit, I'm not going to get this game again because those callouts basically ruin it. I'm happy to report in person. It was not that bad. Was it jarring a couple times? A little bit. Maybe the volume wasn't super up there. Super up there? <laughs> it wasn't super loud. I, though, was pleasantly surprised and relieved that the Fubot callouts, which give you good direction in the game, better direction, maybe even needed direction on some of the things, at least from my brief experience, did not cause issue. It was not cause for alarm. But goddamn, that game is still so good. Uh, it is by far the game I had the most fun playing again this weekend. Foo Fighters. Yeah. Better than Jaws. Better than Labyrinth. Uh, better, I mean, all the ones I named. That's what I'm going through. Um, yeah. Everything in that game. The expression lights. Mike Vinicor killed it. The rules are simple enough. They're like a classic pinball rules. You know, there's, there's modes. There's a couple multi-balls. You can stack them. And there's a couple uh, secret modes is not the right word. The Combotron stuff, building the Fubot. A couple little extra like, hey, I'll get some pieces and do this shit. One of the multi-balls is very easy to get. The other one's a little more difficult. You know, the, the right ramp. And the right ramp to qualify that other more, I should say, difficult multi-ball is a difficult shot. But when you hit it, you feel like a god. Uh, and the, there's, there's no game that beats the flow of that. Um, I don't care who you are. Yeah, <laughs> game is so good. That's one of those. Uh, I, you could just leave the lights and the music off, and I'll just I'll just hit the shots. That's fine. Yeah, why not? Don't even need to hear it because sometimes I don't want to hear it. I want to hear other music. Foo Fighters at a Toys R Us near you. Go find it. Um, I did look at. Uh, they had a Venom. I was like, oh, cool. Is it a Venom Pro or Premium? If it's a Premium, yeah, cool. I might want to play it. You know, I walked up, it's a Premium. Oh, yeah, cool. Nah, I don't want to play it. You know. So that was my internal dialogue with Venom. After playing all those games, I went back to Jaws limited edition version and played it more and somewhat had a somewhat better time. Um, I don't know. I reserve the right to enjoy that game in the future. If it was like if it was local to me, I would, you know, spend time reading the rules, go play it more, and yeah, to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm satisfied. I've played it enough, you know. Which was like Avengers, where Avengers first few times you hit the shots, like man, this game's awesome. You learn the rules, like okay, I can, I can do a few of these things. And then, you know, where you're, any game where you know enough to make a judgment for yourself, not based on you or the listeners of other people judging, you got to fucking like that game. It's so good. Like Godzilla. I don't like it. It's not that great. And not objectively, but personally, it's not my thing. It's not my bag. Jaws could be. And it might have a better chance than a lot of games that'll switch the old mind around because Jurassic Park, the first time I played it, same thing. It's like the second ball. I'm like, I don't fucking, I don't get it. I, you know, sometimes it's your mindset. It's just, it, it's subtle things. I don't know. It just, Jurassic Park wasn't it for me. And I was so sure in the beginning. And lo and behold, eh? It's my favorite game. And uh, it's, yeah. I was I was about to defend saying it's a favorite game. Your, your favorite games can change. Um, and I think, Right now, given the choice of the pinball teleporter into my house, not having to go pick up games, um, and then when someone needs to buy them, take them away. Basically, the ease of access to a pinball machines. If I could have three pinball machines in my room right now, that's what I'm getting at. What would I want to turn around in this little throne? I'm looking behind me right now. What would I want to go up and play right now? Hit start. 
first would be Foo Fighters for sure. I'd go play Foo Fighters. I'd be like, God damn, this is so fucking good. Um, and then anytime I've been done with Foo Fighters, it's never because the game, I'm like, I don't know I can like this game. It's never that. Sometimes I get sick of the music as a Foo Fighters fan. Again, you know, eh, I need a little break. Uh, or yeah, it's more like I've paused for now, Foo Fighters. I'm pausing you, bro. I'll be back. No hard feelings. Next game would, yeah, I guess, fuck, it'd be goddamn Walking Dead Pro. Oh, that game's nasty. It's so good, but nasty. Because the, th- the three drop targets in Jaws made me just think, man, I wish I was hitting food and first aid. You know, I wish I was, I wish I was going for bloodbath right now. Man, not chumming. I don't want to chum. I want to go for bloodbath. But I would assume from seeing Keith Owens' videos on on walking dead that was a a influence on that game and it should be because man 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 is walking dead good i would turn around i'd play foo fighters and then i would play walking dead until it kicked me in the sack so many times that i just threw up from the testicle pain and then it's a toss-up between ghostbusters oh god my god is the answer ghostbusters It's Ghostbusters. Yeah. So, to recap my bad penny and now current orgasmic state of pinball, it's Foo Fighters, Walking Dead, let's just say Pro, and Ghostbusters. The funny thing about Ghostbusters, if I turned around, I'd want it to be a premium. Yeah. I've owned the Pro a few times, and I love the Pro. The Pro... If I had to be buried with a Ghostbusters, which what a fucking, what a weird mental practice. What a fucking niche hobby. <laughs> and a fucking, if I was to be buried with one pinball machine and even further, one Ghostbusters pinball machine, what trim level would it be? What the fuck am I doing with my life? <laughs> Jesus. It would be a pro. It'd be a Ghostbusters pro. The left ramp is the shit. Super makeable. And it's not all cluttered. The Slimer is so much better in the Pro. Are you serious? Jesus, it's so much better in the Pro. The Slimer and Ghostbusters Premium. Stop bouncing around, you fuck. Get off the meth and just stay there. I don't want to hit that thing anyways. I want to, you know, I want to pick the skill shot that makes me just start a mode. Fuck hitting the ghost letters and then smashing slimer's nutsack around get the fuck out of here slimer's awesome but for those who know the game you know like you shortcut things around and then ball two i want to light tobin's spirit guide and just hit that fucking scoop all day um anyway uh, strategy for ghostbusters pro some some other time when we do a deep dive of ghostbusters which apologies sorry to to the uh the fans out there haven't had a deep dive last week or two maybe damn sorry uh getting to it might have to record one solo or a couple um, because just been busy. Yeah, so busy with work. But uh, thank you for your patronage. Really, patreon.com slash pinball party. Go get some deep dives there. Um, we're, we're pecking back up soon. I'm getting there. Um, Ghostbusters. And the left ramp on the Pro is great. A little better than the premium. And it's the play field's a little easier to see in the back because I'm not all the shit. Slimer, fuck you in the premium. Okay, we got that far. Uh, but... There's a couple things on the premium I like. I actually like the magnetic slings on the premium. Yeah, I'm sure you're shutting off the podcast now, but I actually like them a lot because it adds in, I don't know, to me it's novel because I've had the pro so much. So it's kind of a new toy, the magnetic slings that, that shove the ghost ball all around. It's cool. And it's it's a game about ghosts. I, it's fucking awesome. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. The main ramp on the premium, it's steeper. It's harder to do super lupins. Um, um, Not as hard. It's just, it's not as consistent. And uh, the, but I like on the premium how it goes down into the subway and comes back up. It's a small thing, mind you, but I'll take it. The ecto goggles on the right, is that what they're called? Take it or leave it but it looks real fucking cool. And the right ramp, the other big difference between the two models. Huh. The right ramp. I love hitting the right ramp on the Pro a lot. It's really neat when it goes all the way back up the ramp. For those who know, there's like these rollovers. There's three of them when you hit the right ramp. 
if you know, you know on the pro. It's awesome. But it's also awesome on the premium when you hit it and it quickly fucking whips back at you to the left flipper. Which is a different, you know, like on the on the pro, when you hit the right ramp with the left flipper, it comes back to the right flipper. So you can't hit it again. For like PKE mode, I forget. Or is that alternating ramps? This isn't a Ghostbusters deep dive, but yeah. Ghostbusters. Stern's Ghostbusters. Let's remake that shit. It's a spike game, right? Yeah. So that and... Oh, shit! And Game of Thrones. Another spike. Forgot to mention. I have a Game of Thrones in the other room. Yeah, I have a game right now. Game of Thrones. Been playing that. Uh, game of Thrones is pretty awesome. It's... um, uh, Yeah. It's a very Steve Ritchie game. The rules... I mean, they're deep... But they're also very, very simple. Um, Choose your own adventure. Choose your house. It's a game that is at the right price. For like six grand or a little under, I think it's a pretty great package. That's what she said as well. I don't have a lot to say on Game of Thrones. I've never had it in the house or locally to play it a lot. And I've beaten it once or twice um not chasing points those the points in that game kind of inevitably just happen because there's so many multipliers and so much shit going on but that's a game with the color dmd where that is a that is a must-have jeez that's a must-have because without a color dmd you're like oh i can't really tell what's going on and with the color dmd you're like wow this looks almost as good as spike 2 what the fuck kind of like ghostbusters actually spike one what a sweet spot Man, good shit. Well, Spike 3 will be coming out soon enough. What kind of advancements will Spike 3 have? I don't know. Well, if behind me we have Foo Fighters, Walking Dead Pro, and Ghostbusters, Foo Fighters will not be getting any updates anytime soon. I could see Ghostbusters getting an update, but please announce it before I... or wait... After I sell the next one, I probably buy to play the shit out of for a while, please. Uh, and then Walking Dead, I think that game needs a it needs a reskin or just a re like yeah m- make it again just just different paint. Hopefully it's John Wick. Just make it Walking Dead or fuck man, what else can you do? Just just put out Walking Dead again. Call it the same thing. I don't care. Or retheme it. Shit game is so good and the rules the depth of those rules hold up put insider connected on walking dead god damn that'd be awesome but yeah spike 3 will come out soon enough maybe it'll update a couple of those old games um and who knows maybe jaws will move up the ranks in my personal ranking next time i play it when we get it locally who knows all right well it's late for me I have to do my job, which is strange to say. Uh, Thanks for joining the Pinball Party. Thanks for listening to me talk about Labyrinth, Jaws, uh, Pulp Fiction, and other stuff I've talked about before, but really appreciate it. If you could give the show a follow on Facebook or Instagram, that would be great, or even better, give it a rating on Apple Music or Spotify or whatever you listen to it. Give it five stars. Give it one star. Give it something. Show your support by just clicking it. Use your thumb, go down there, just click. click. That'd be awesome. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Thank you for the patronage to the patrons out there. We'll get a deep dive coming soon. And uh, yeah, everyone, have a good one. We'll talk to you later.